This is the day that the Lord hath made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Why don't we just open it up with a little bit of thanksgiving. If you ain't got nothing to praise him about, praise him for this day. Amen. Praise him for the breath that you've got that you're breathing. Amen. Today is a good day, and I'm going to magnify him and exalt his name. Hallelujah. Let's worship together. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste, glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchased of God, born of His Spirit, oh, I'm washed in Him. You have brought me 
Hallelujah, church. Can you feel the praise being poured out today? There's something special in the congregation going on right now. There are people that are feeling the liberty, that are feeling the freedom of worship in the house of God right now. Just cut loose for a minute. Let's just show God that we're here to praise Him. Let's just show God that we're here to worship for a little bit. Let's just go a little bit longer, Sister Amanda. There's a breakthrough that needs to happen in this place today. for his church and now it's time that we give back to him for a little bit we're going to take a moment and give back to the kingdom of God we've got so many ways that we can give here at the River Bend we've got GiveLify, we've got PayPal we've got old fashioned giving if you're here in person you can mail in cash your checks to the address on the screen we've got so many ways to give you just pick which one that you like and give as the Lord leads you we've got a declaration of faith that we're going to pray You would stand and pray with me today if you're not already. Upon the authority of your word I have given, and it shall be given unto me. Pressed down, shaken together, and running over. I am a tither, and I give my offerings. And I bring them today into your storehouse. Therefore, the enemy is rebuked, and the curse is broken, and I live under an open heaven. You pour out upon me such a blessing that there is not enough room to receive it. We receive jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, sales and commissions, benefits and settlements, estates and inheritances, interest and incomes, rebates and returns, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, bills paid off, debts demolished and royalties received. My whole family saved and serving God in perfect health and abundance, walking in divine favor and blessing. I am blessed going in, I am blessed going out, and all that I do will prosper. In Jesus' name, amen. Come and give, church. Blessed assurance, Jesus. 
But this time, that's the message, Brother Terrence, it touched me differently. And the title, as Brother Tenney stood there in a feeble state, getting old, didn't look like the Brother Tenney that we had remembered growing up. But his title was, Thank God for Inventing Pain, Brother David. And I look at my own life, and I look at the lives of some of you, Brother GL preached here not too long ago about we come to the Lord and we get in his presence and then we wonder why everything ain't perfect and everything ain't great. But guess what? God give us pain for a reason. Because when I realize how much I truly cannot do without him, then and then alone can he come in and change my life. When I realize I am powerless to do anything on my on. I can't walk. I can't talk. I can't breathe. I can't think. I can do nothing without the Spirit of God that lives within me. I am nothing without Him. And when we grasp that in our own life, then and then alone can we say, you know what, Lord? This breath that you give me today, I will magnify you with it. I will praise you with it. The strength that I have in these hands, I will clap them under you. These legs, I will jump and I will dance. And I will magnify the King of kings and the Lord of lords because you and you alone are worthy of my praise. There is none other that's worthy of the praise that I can give. So all of you in this place today, I want you to come, if you will. We're going to stand up here and we're going to just begin to praise the Lord. We're not going to ask Him for anything. A lot of us are going through situations, circumstances, pains, troubles, trials, whatever they may be. But here is a place of worship. This is a place of praise that we can lift up holy hands unto the King of kings and Lord of lords and magnify him simply because of who he is. Amen. So all of us that will, let's raise our hands right now and begin to praise the Lord in this place. God, I magnify you, O Lord. 
God, I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that there's nothing good in me other than you, oh God. There is nothing that I'm able to do other than magnify you and praise you and thank you for all you're doing in this place, Lord. God, we come into this place broken. We come into this place with hurts, with habits, and with hang-ups, oh Lord. But we come to the one and the only one that can solve them. God, and in spite of everything that goes on in our life, in spite of every trial, every situation, every circumstance, God, we will lift up holy hands and we will magnify you today. This day, we will praise you, O oh Lord, and we will thank you, O oh God, for you are worthy of our praise. I magnify you, I praise you, and I lift you up, O oh Lord, for you are the King of kings and the Lord of lords, and I give you honor, I give you glory, and I give you praise. Let your will be done in this place, and let your will be done in this people. In the name that is above every name, I pray, in Jesus' name, amen and amen.
start to sing into the night. Ooh, what a presence of the Lord is in this house. This is what you call life-changing church, ladies and gentlemen. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. I was glad. Because here, I will get what I need. I will be renewed and refreshed and strengthened. And I will not leave here the same I came in. That's the promise of the power of the Holy Ghost. He said, I make a way in the wilderness. I make rivers in the desert. He said, it don't matter if it's daylight or midnight. That's all the same to me. Huh? I said, that's all the same to the king. Because when it's dark and he shows up, it becomes light. Jesus is all you need. He is all you need. Oh, let's lift our hands and praise him one more time. Just lift up your voice and thank him. Thank him for his presence. Thank him for his faith-building songs and worship. Thank him for his spirit. God, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. You are the God that never changes. You are omniscient, omnipotent, omnipresent. You are the beginning and the ending, the first and the last, which is and was and is to come, the Almighty. You are the King. You are the Lamb. I just want to let you, what, if you just want to take a look around, here's what I was thinking a while ago. It's an old song. It says, Rock of Ages, cleft for me. Let me hide myself in thee. What you're witnessing right now is a hiding place. What you're wit witnessing right now is life hasn't changed. The storm hasn't stopped, but there's a safe place. Let the water and the blood from thy wounded side which flowed be of sin the double cure. Save from wrath and make me pure. I feel a witness in this place. I feel a witness in this place. Oh, I feel the power of the Holy Ghost. I feel his witness. the promises you make. There isn't one that is delayed. So I will not lose heart. Here. Somebody say here. Listen. And start to sing. My praise. My praise, praise. your praise, declare the battle won, declare the battle won, declare the battle won.
I invite you to turn in your Bibles with me to Acts chapter 2, verse number 40. Thank you so much for your worship. Thank you for your response. He's always here. We just don't always respond. But today, we responded. Thank you for your response. Acts chapter 2, verse number 40. Thankful for our praise team. If, if you're able and willing to just stand, we'll read one verse just in honor of the reading of the word of the Lord. I'm thankful for our praise team and, and what God is doing. Really happy about the Sages meeting we had last night. 28 people were at Sages last night. That's incredible. That's incredible. I'm also happy to tell you that Thursday night at both of our recovery meetings combined, there were 78 people at the two recovery meetings. We won't stop until the whole world knows. Now the river that they just sang about is the flood waters of life that come against you and try to drown you, try to kill you. But there is a river that flows within the heart of man, it comes from heaven, Acts 2 and 40. And with many other words, did he testify, everybody say testify, testify. and exhort. Say that too, please. Exhort. Saying, save yourselves from this untoward generation. Today I'm going to preach to you for a few minutes. Again, those rivers, I've wallowed around in them before. Those rivers we sang about. But I want to speak to you today on this subject because of the river. Because there is a river that brings salvation and brings hope. And with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, save yourselves. Save yourselves. I pray before we leave this place today, if nothing else happens, that we will be delivered from the responsibility for others being saved and delivered into the promise of others being saved. God, I love you. I love you so much, man. Your presence is, is beautiful today, and you know exactly what we need. And I pray, God, before we leave here today, there is not one soul in this house that hasn't responded to you the way they want to, the way that they feel they should. I pray that the desire to just jump in, so to speak, will come alive in everyone that's here, and we will realize what a blessing we can be to our world I pray, Lord, that we understand it's not by might, not by power, but it is by your spirit. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Don't forget about they will announce it later, but we have a harvest rally tonight at Carruthersville. Begins at 6 o'clock, and it is designed to see people filled with the Holy Ghost. 
Uh, 35 were filled with the Holy Ghost last night at the two rallies that I'm familiar with, and we believe that. Please come be with us. I'd like to see at least about 50 of the River Bend come to that rally tonight. Acts 2 and 40, this is Peter preaching on the day of Pentecost, finishing up his sermon. As a matter of fact, it's a summary of the end of his sermon and his altar call, if you please. It says, with many other words did he testify. And I looked that word testify up, and it means witnessing done with a high level of self-involvement. It is a testimony not of something you have seen, but of something that you have experienced, that you were involved in it. And, and then he also exhorted them, and that word exhort means to come alongside, up close and personal, summon and beseech. And so in effect, Peter was preaching many other words, testifying and exhorting them, come be a part of what God is doing in our lives. And then I looked up save yourself, and it means deliver Deliver out of danger and into safety. And I have preached about this passage before, and I must confess to you that I struggled with this passage for a long time because everybody knows it's Jesus who saves us. Everybody knows that it's Jesus Christ, and we can't save ourselves in, from that aspect. And why would the Bible tell us save ourselves? And then it says, from this untoward generation. Now, I have always kind of took the word at face value, and it's, it's a generation going the wrong way, untoward, not, not one that I need to be going with, but one that I need to be going against. But I looked up the word untoward, and it literally means crooked, bent, or, or dried out like a piece of parched wood. So he said, save yourselves from this dry, thirsty, hungry, parched generation. It's a picture of a thirsty, starving generation, twisted, as it were, twisted by the longing for that necessary ingredient for sustenance and survival. You know it's the picture of the tree or the picture of the wood that is here in a dry place. And, and you have no doubt seen the pictures of trees that are in the dying throes of death. And, and you can see them, as it were, twisting themselves uh, uh, in, in some sort of a, of a desperate desire to get to the water because a tree that is dying knows that it needs water to be revived. What provokes the twisting? And here's the thing I want to point out to you today, and, and we talked about it a little bit in elements, but when a tree needs water, when a tree is, is a, a witness of being dry, of reaching for water, stretching or twisting, you have to understand that it is not a matter of want to, but it's a matter of have to. They have come to a place where water is not abundant and, and there's not a water that, that's just raining all the time or water flowing by, but it has now got to a place of, of where you're going to, the proverbial cut bait or fish. If I don't get some water, Water, I won't live. It's that life giving, sustaining water, not a matter of preference. When you're desperate, you don't say, I want tap water or I want bottled water. When you're desperate, you take any water you can get. Something taught and learned from creation. The way things work, without which there's no survival, there's no hope, there's nothing to look forward to but death for that dry tree or that dry piece of wood. It is a type of this world upon which the Spirit of God has been poured out. A world that is stretched, reaching, crying, longing for a life-giving, sustaining water, as it were, but they're dying. Gnarled and twisted, busted and broken, dried and cracked, but Peter proclaimed to that very world, he proclaimed to a dying, dried up, starving, thirsty, cracked, twisted world, this is that. This is what you long for. This is what your soul desires. This is that. But then he says, says 
save yourselves from this dried up generation. It's a picture you have to see. And, and if we're not careful, we'll see a world that is eating and drinking and being merry and it looks like they don't have a care in the world and the only people with problems is the one trying to do right. But this picture that's on the wall is, is the, the way it really is. I, I told the men this morning, and please please forgive me for, for somewhat of a carnal reference, but it ripped my heart out. And, and somebody sent me a clip of a, of a Dr. Phil episode where there was a man and a woman on there, and they were uh, just been married nine months, but they were about to get a divorce because the husband found out that his wife had been with about 40 men before she got with him. Yeah, that's exactly what everybody in that audience did. But then they begin to ridicule her and they begin to make fun of her because she said that she had slept with her husband before they got married and she felt guilty and she felt ashamed and, and she felt like she didn't want to do that out of wedlock anymore and they started laughing at her and said, you should have thought of that a lot sooner. You should have thought of that about 40 people ago. What in the world did you think you were doing? Where did you get all moral all of a sudden? And she said something that broke my heart. She said, I was just looking for somebody to love me for me. But the world doesn't show you that picture. The world tells you that you've got to be promiscuous to be wanted and you've got to be wild to have fun and, and you've got to drink and you've got to party and you've got to get high in order to get free from the trappings of life. And I would submit to you that that is a picture on the wall of what the world really looks like. Money won't make you happy. Things won't make you happy. You were not born wanting money. You were not born wanting things, uh, houses and lands and cars and trucks, uh, but you were born wanting God. You have to believe it. The enemy wants to flip the script, and it's a contradiction when you hear the, the man of God say, save yourselves from this dried up generation, from this generation of lies, this generation of, of fake, this generation of posturing. He said, save yourselves from this generation until you realize it is simply a statement that declares Jesus has already done all he can. He paid the price, coming in the likeness of sinful flesh, subjecting himself to the feeling of every infirmity of which all flesh is susceptible. And the call from Jesus Christ is, now that I have done the work, it is finished. It is as Elijah of old, who he and his servant are surrounded by the enemy. Somebody let me preach to you for just a little bit. He, they're surrounded by the enemy. Everywhere they look, there's the enemy's chariots and the enemy's soldiers uh, and the enemies with, with axes and swords and everywhere they look. Uh, and the Bible says that the man of God turned to his servant and said, don't you be afraid because they that be with us uh, are more than they that be with them. Which is powerful. But the most powerful part comes uh, when Elijah then prays uh, and says, Lord, ah, he said, Lord, would you open his eyes uh, so he can see things the way that they really are? And when the power of God touched the servant uh, and his eyes were really opened, uh, he looked up on the hills and all around the enemy uh, and all around the enemy, uh, there were soldiers and angels of fire uh, that had come down from heaven to fight on their behalf. to be released to see things as they really are. Because when you are filled, we taught it this morning, when you are filled with the Spirit of God and you're walking after the Spirit and not after the flesh, they that be with you are more than they that be with them. We just got to get the blinders off. 
I don't know what you pray over your kids. I pray over my kids to be protected and to be safe. And I pray a covering of the blood of Jesus, the shield of faith, the prayers of the saints, your spirit, your word, and your name. But we need to begin to pray, open their eyes that they can see that this is the best life. This is the most powerful life. That this is where there's hope. This is where there's peace. This is where there's rest. See, it's connected to the blindness brought on by the God of this world, the Bible says. Not just blinded eyes, but blinded minds. Blinded to the beautiful light of the hope of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Understanding he is the source and the finish of our faith. Isaiah prophesied of a coming blessing. Isaiah 12 and 2, he said, Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. I just heard that, I believe. For, here's, woo, Holy Ghost. For the Lord Jehovah is my strength and he is my song. I said the Lord Jehovah is my strength and he is my song. The Lord Jehovah is my strength and he is my song. In the night time, in the losing time, in the weak time, in the time that it looks like I'm on the way down. And he also is come to be my, my, my. I wish somebody would say my, not them, not her, not him, not in Africa, not in Mexico, but right here, he has come to be my salvation. Therefore, Therefore, since you know he's come to be your salvation, with joy shall you draw water out of the wells of salvation. What's that talking about? That's talking about that life-giving water. You need it. I read somewhere the other day that the average person uses 1,000 gallons of water a day. Say, no, there ain't no way. Oh, yes. Don't, don't be doubting me. I read it on the Internet. But what does it mean about that well? It means that every day of my life, I have the privilege of rolling out of my bed, if that's my privilege or if that's my pleasure. I argue that as soon as your eyes pop open, where you're laying at, you have the opportunity to drop your bucket down in heaven's well and get reconnected to the power of the Holy Ghost. And we got to start getting in the habit of doing that more than checking our phone and checking our emails and calling our friends and checking the weather outside. We better check the water. Because everything will change. Y'all got to stay with me. Everything will change when you drink in the water from the well that'll never run dry. You cannot hope. Man, we felt the power of the Holy Ghost here and it's rich today and it's beautiful today. And matter of fact, I felt something itch the back of my head and said, you could probably just cut them loose. A lot going on today. We've already had a move of God. We even have some people bumping and thumping that ain't bumped and thumped in a hot minute. I love this. I love it. I wouldn't trade nothing for it. But this ain't going to be with you in the morning. Except if you're like me and broke down and wore out already. And you're going to roll out of bed in the morning and realize you should have got up in shifts. <laughs> Anybody feel what I'm saying? Yeah. Like you shouldn't have tried to do it all at once. But I want to let somebody know, you and I have the privilege. Let me tell you something. The river don't just flow on Sundays. And the river don't just flow on Wednesdays. But the river is flowing. The river flows on Monday and on Tuesday and on Wednesday and on Thursday and on Friday and on Saturday. And I tell you that the Lord is looking forward to when you show up to work drunk. 
drunk on Jesus, uh, drunk on the power of the Holy Ghost, uh, when you can't walk straight in uh, and punch the clock uh, because you've already had your head off in the well uh, and you've already been drinking uh, from that heavenly water. Therefore, with joy shall you draw. There's kind of a messed up thinking in our world. I'm talking about the church world, which says we got to try to convince Jesus to bless us, and we got to try to get everything out of the way. I want to let you know something. The Bible says we've got to get to the place where we go to the well with joy. We don't go. We don't wait till the water comes till we get happy. We don't wait till the water comes till we get joy. But we got it on the way. Because I know what's going to happen when I step into the Holy of Holies. I know what's going to happen when the Shekinah comes down and dwells on the mercy seat. I know what's going to happen when I leave the flesh and move over into the spirit. The scripture says, there is therefore now no condemnation. Then we're in Christ Jesus, walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. That don't mean condemnation ain't going to come. But it's going to mean I got so much Jesus in me that it don't hurt. Because I know it's a lie. Somebody here preaching this morning, I know it's not the truth. You see, my Jesus died for me, Brother Blake. He died for my sins. The very thing that the devil uses to toss up on me and say, you did this and you did this and you did this. And the Lord is trying to tell me, don't listen to him. That's what I died for. Don't listen to him. That's what I died for. To set you free from the troubles and powers of sin. We was talking about spitting on people, Sister Tina. I just did it. And I wish I was sorry, but I ain't. Listen, it is not of the Lord. I am not getting something when I get the Holy Ghost and when I get filled up with the Spirit. It is not something from the Lord. It is not something of the Lord. It is the Lord. He is... He is not one third. He is not a part. He is all and all. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. He said to his disciples, I am with you now, but I shall be in you. Paul said in Colossians 1 and 27, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. When the Holy Ghost begins to operate in us, it is not simply my flesh on steroids. It is the power of Jesus Christ that walks when I walk, that speaks when I speak, that hears when I hear. I don't know if we believe that or not. I felt a little backlash. But you've got to understand, if I start thinking when I lay hands on somebody, it ain't me laying hands on them, but the power of Jesus Christ working within me laying hands on them, I'll stop worrying about what I look like. Ooh. It's not of the Lord, it is the Lord. He is my salvation. He told the woman at the well, he said, if you knew the gift of God and who it is that saith unto you, give me to drink, you would have asked me. You would have asked me and I would have given you living water. The woman said, you ain't got no pot and you ain't got nothing to draw with and the well is deep. Are you better than Jacob? And Jesus answered and said, whoever drinks this water will thirst again. Oh, whosoever, whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. For whatever's going on in the sky, in the earth, or on the earth, the promises God is for keeping us, protecting us, 
and saving us from the pool of an empty world who does not have what they claim to have. We got to get over being intimidated by money. We got to get over being intimidated by prestige. We have got to get over being intimidated by reputation. And we have got to realize what is happening inside of us is real. You think all these people have been coming on Wednesday and been coming on Sunday because of what we got? No, they ain't coming because of what we got as far as music or as far as preaching. They coming because the Holy Ghost is drawing them. It ain't cause we're special. Matter of fact, if the Lord has his way, everybody would have the Holy Ghost. Everybody would have the Spirit operating through them. And everybody would be having church like we having it this morning. We ain't got the market cornered on nothing. And a matter of fact, if we start thinking we do have the market cornered, we're one step out of hell. If you think you've got the market cornered, you won't do nothing. This world we live in, they're all believing a lie. That something temporary is really what they need. You understand that the world is just trying to get through a moment. They're just trying to get through a second. That in order, the world has taught us that in order to be attractive, you got to become something other than what you are. Then buoyed by something that's not real, contrived by the very world that Jesus came to save you from, it's the enemy's business to kill, steal, and destroy. And the change that the Lord wants to bring that we preach about is not really a change at all. It is to take us back to what he created us for. The world perverted you and me. The world made you think you were less than. The world think you should be satisfied with being less than or trying your best to live up to what they portray as completion. But I want you to know that you have not scratched the surface for what God created you for. You were made for more than satisfying the world. You were made for more than fitting in. You were made to wade into the very pit of hell and bring souls back. You were made to make a difference. Do you believe it? Or you just hope it's true? Jesus paid it all. The complete price for our sins. Not just for ours, but for the sins of the whole world. I said for the sins of the whole world. That means he died to deliver the worst person you know. A change is going to come, and the change is going to be we're really going to believe that God filled us with the Holy Ghost, not just to be able to take us to heaven one day, but to, for, us to be, for him to be able to change our world through us. And that can't happen until you learn to love everybody. Jesus paid it all. Peter's message was and is powerful. And the immeasurable reach of the question they asked Peter is still resonating in the hearts and minds of men today when he asked Peter and the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? He followed it with a clear answer. Not a mysterious one, but a clear one. Clear in type and application. His answer was a type of Jesus' death, burial, resurrection. A clear description of what it means to truly come to the Father. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. 
You can't get back to God except through me. In the likeness of his death, burial, and resurrection, we repent of our sins. We are baptized in water in the only saving name of Jesus Christ. And then the same spirit that brought Christ forth from the grave quickens our mortal body. Resurrecting us from a body of death that is ruled by sin, identified by darkness, uh, into the kingdom of the conquered and governed by Jesus Christ. Colossians 1 and 21, and you that were sometimes alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now hath he reconciled in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and unblameable and unreprovable in his sight. If you continue in the faith, grounded and settled, and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel, which you have heard and which was preached to every creature under heaven. Revelation 22 and 17, and the spirit and the bride say come. And let him that heareth say come. And let him that is a thirst, let him that's dried up, let him that's on the brink of dying, let him that is desperate for something, anything to make me complete, let him come. And whosoever will, Let him take the water of life freely. It doesn't matter how dried up we are. It doesn't matter how many other drinks we've sought after to satisfy. And it doesn't matter how many scars those attempts have left on your spirit, soul, and body. When you've heard it, you've heard it. When you know, you know. And when you drink from that well that has never run dry, you'll never be the same again. The well is here. The water flows freely, but it involves a matter of our will. That's why Peter said, save yourself, because it is his will that you all be saved. But will, will we will the same thing? And with many other words, did he testify and exhort, saying, save yourselves. This is, in effect, the altar call of Pentecost. From Acts 2 and 14 through Acts 2 and 40, Peter preached. He told them what was happening. He told them that it was the culmination of all history until this moment. He told them that God's friends and God's enemies were working together to fulfill his purpose. He said that Jesus Christ had poured out this, which you both see and hear, and God has made that same Jesus whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. And verse 41 says, Then they that gladly received his word were baptized. And the same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. Ezekiel chapter 47. prophet Ezekiel is taken in a vision to the door of the temple. And from underneath the threshold of the door to the temple flows a river of water. At first it does more, it does little more than just wet the ground. But then a thousand cubits, a little over a thousand feet vision takes Ezekiel down the river path and a thousand cubits later the river is ankle deep. Then he takes him a thousand more cubits and the river is knee deep. Then he takes him a thousand more cubits and the river is waist deep. And then he takes him a thousand more cubits and the river is too deep to walk in but water to swim in. But, he says, 
There's no way I could get across it. Then the vision takes him back to the beginning. And while he's walking his way up that river, he notices that where there was nothing, there is now fruitful trees growing up. On either side of the river, there are leafy, healthy, bushy trees. And the man of God declared to the prophet and said, it shall come to pass that everything that the river touches will live. It was a prophetic picture of the outpouring of the Holy Ghost into all the world. Not just the outpouring of the Spirit, but the message with which the outpouring of the Spirit rides in on. From Jerusalem into the world, from a small stream to a deep river that cannot be passed over. And he says, the trees will provide fruit, and the leaves won't fade, and the fruit won't run out, and they shall continually bring forth new and fresh fruit. Get this now. And the leaves shall be for medicine, and the fruit for meat to eat because of the river. Come to the music, please. In the last day, John chapter 7, 37. In the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried. If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly, out of his innermost being, shall flow rivers of living water. This spake he of the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive, but the Holy Ghost wasn't given yet, because Jesus was not yet glorified. This I'm preaching to you about today did not happen until 10 days, excuse me, 50 days after the death of Jesus Christ. 10 days after he ascended. I need you to stay with me for just a minute. I know there's a lot of you here today that you come to visit for first one thing, then another. But I want to let you know the real reason you came is because you want the Holy Ghost. You want, ladies and gentlemen, please hear me as I tell you, nothing else will help you do what you were created to do but that river flowing up out of you. And the generation of the world that we live in, I've been teaching this, I've been preaching this, and we still don't get it. You weren't brought here to be a part of the world. Anybody can do that. You were brought here to be what the world needs. Greater is he that's in me is not a battle cry. It is an affirmation of our faith. Everywhere the river goes, it brings healing. And it brings deliverance. And it brings faith. And it brings sustenance. And the river is in you. You don't bring people to church so they can get connected to the river. You bring people to you so they can drink from the well that never runs dry. What's going to happen to the apostolic movement? 
when we stop believing the only place people can get connected with heaven is at church. So it's not just a matter of my survival. It's a matter of my fulfillment. And I can't be anything less than what he created me to be. And I can't be what he created to me, me to be without the influence of the Holy Ghost working in me. If you have never repented of your sins, been baptized in Jesus' name, or received the gift of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in other tongues, you can have that experience before you leave here today. Now, if that crosses swords with your theology or your ideology, I hope you're good enough like you are. I do. I hope when I get there, I find out there was a whole lot more ways than I preached there was. But I know the book says, except the man be born again of the water, and of the Spirit. He can't see the kingdom of heaven and he can't enter the kingdom of heaven. I know that when on the day of Pentecost they said, men and brethren, what do we do? Peter said, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. You shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. I know that in Acts 2 they spoke in tongues when they got the Holy Ghost. Acts 8 they spoke in tongues or it's inferred that they spoke in tongues. Acts 10 they spoke in tongues when they got the Holy Ghost. Acts 19 they spoke in tongues when they got the Holy Ghost. Paul got the Holy Ghost and he said, I thank God I speak in tongues more than you all. You say, well, I'm scared of that. Who ain't scared of it? I got the Holy Ghost and then didn't speak in tongues again for about 10 years because every time I felt it, I quenched it down. I thought it was too easy after I got the Holy Ghost because I'd cried and prayed and hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. woo But when my faith was able to push me to a place where I could truly surrender everything. God baptized me with the gift of the Holy Ghost. And it's so beautiful and it's so powerful and it's so rich and it's so helpful. Let me tell you what the most beautiful thing is, is when I wake up in the morning and I'm in my flesh, Brother David, I can step into the Holy of Holies and the well is still flowing and the Spirit is still moving and the power of the Holy Ghost is ready to go to work. And if you've had the Holy Ghost for since Noah got off the ark, <laughs> Ma Maggie, Maggie, well, go get the Holy Ghost. Go, go get the Holy Ghost. That's how you do it. Blake, she wants the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Listen, listen. Just let her get the Holy Ghost. Don't get distracted. Will it embarrass you? Will it embarrass you? Stand up, Sister Nadine. Let me tell you something, ladies and gentlemen. I'm not going to tell how old you are, but I'm going to let you tell it. 85. Sister Nadine is 85 years old. Right. And Maggie comes to church with her because she is the first home Bible study that Sister Nadine has ever taught in 85 years. And now Maggie's been coming to church with her. Ain't that right? Huh? Hey, you ain't too old for God to start working through you. You ain't too old for the Holy Ghost to start working through you. God will do it. It's not you, it's him. It's the Holy Ghost. Go, 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 go. Come on, everybody. Step out of your soul. It's water for your anger and your knees to your waist to swim in. Holy Spirit, rain.
to, we're about to baptize Amy. Uh, I tell you what, God's hand is on Amy's life. She's she's doing big things in recovery. Uh, she uh, she sets an example for other people uh, to follow, and I am so proud to see what she's doing today. Let's all pray for Amy right quick. Lord, in the name of Jesus, God, I pray for Amy. God, I pray that her commitment continues. God, I pray that she realizes what she is. God, I pray that you continue to move her in the right direction. God, that every person that she comes in contact with, God, that she continues to show the love of Jesus and what she's done, what you've done in her life. God, I pray that today that she understands when she goes down in this water that every sin she's ever committed, everything she's ever done wrong, got to be wiped away and pure as white as snow. God, we pray all this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amy B. Lope, upon the confession of your faith and the teaching of the apostles, I now baptize you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name. We got another one. This, this is Amanda Downey. Uh, she's been with us a little while, and God's doing big things in her life. Let's all pray for her right now. Lord, in the name of Jesus, God, I pray for Amanda. I pray, God, that you continue to work in her life. God, I, I pray that you do big things, God. And today is the beginning of the rest of her life. God, I pray that everywhere she goes, God, that people can see the face of Jesus. God, I pray that she understands today when she goes down in this water that every single thing she's ever done, every sin she's ever committed, got to be gone. We pray all this in your mighty name, Jesus. Amen. All right, I'm going to put my hand over here. Okay. Amanda Downing, by the confession of your faith and the teaching of the apostles, I now baptize you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name. If you're thankful for the presence that is in this place, let's just give a hand clap to the Lord right now. Thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. What amazing opportunity it is to show up in the house of the Lord, hear a message and act on it, and the Lord show up and do something in your life that changes you, not just today, but that can change you forever. I'm thankful for that opportunity when we're aware that he is drawing us somewhere, that he is going to show up. I'm thankful for that. Mighty word. We got a lot of announcements.
We got youth prayer meeting tonight, uh, this Monday night at 6.30. 12 hours of prayer this Saturday, October 26th. Text pray to the church number to sign up. Pastor appreciation service is next Sunday, the 27th, with a dinner to follow at the community building. Trunk or treat is October the 31st. From 5 to 7, please let Sister Amanda know if you plan to have a booth or table. Only wholesome themes. We also need candy. Sister Stacy uh, Stanley will be speaking in Dyersburg today at 2 p.m. Any lady wanting to go, please let her and Brother Shannon know. Address is 250 Youth Home Road, Section 4 Harvest Rally, Rally today at 6 p.m. at Jesus Name Tabernacle in Carothersville, uh, Missouri. Speaker is Reverend Chris Green. It is going to be good. Uh, pumpkin decoration contest. Voting ends and the winner will be announced at the end of service on October the 27th, which is next Sunday. Money goes to Aaron Pays Fund. Just a reminder that Parma Recovery has changed to Thursday nights. Church Hayride is Saturday, November the 2nd. Meet at the church at 5 p.m. Please text HAY to, to the church number to register. Sneaker Sunday, November the 3rd. Wear your favorite pair of tennis shoes. Baby brunch for Sister Paige King. Saturday, November the 16th at 10 a.m. Here at the church. She is registered at babylist.com. Instead of a card, they request that you bring a book for the baby and write a special message inside. Please RSVP to Sister Meredith at 573-326-0166. Is there any more announcements? Any birthdays or anniversaries in the house today? I know we got one. I'm thankful for my brother, Alan. Thankful that I get to see my brother in church with me. Thank you. All right. All right. Thank you. Sister Katie's going to take your pick. Mer out. Hold on, Meredith. Hold on, Meredith. Sister Meredith. Here's your bookmark. Blake, will you dismiss us in prayer, please? You're dismissed.